today I'm driving my 2007 BMW Z4 Coupe. This particular Z4 Coupe is a model designated E86. It was produced from years 2006 to 2008. And in those two years in the United States, according to Wikipedia anyway, a little bit under 900 of these cars were built with six speeds. So they are kind of rare. In the UK, there's something like 1,600 of these that were manufactured with six-speed transmissions. Now, from what I recall, there's a sticker on the gearbox that says, lifetime oil, no oil change. And I'm in the manual transmission business. In fact, if you guys don't know it already, I've been in the manual transmission business for 40 years. And oil changing in these gearboxes, in any gearbox, is very critical because what happens here is that if you get a low oil level, there's no dipsticks. And if you leak over a small period of time, you know, a drop here, a drop there, five years go by, six years go by, your oil level's low and the transmission runs dry and burns up. Now there are no service parts for these transmissions. There's nothing available other than a few seals. So if you burn the unit up, you're looking roughly at around a $3,500 bill with exchange for a reman unit from BMW. It's the only way you can fix them. Unless you have core units, like what I do is I buy core units up so I have parts. That's really the only way I'm gonna do it. But the other important thing is, is dirty oil. These transmissions are very complex. They have very close tolerances in them. And if you have the oil dirty, you can get notchy shifting because the dirt's gonna clog the rail passages up, it's gonna bind up on the, the uh, synchronizer rings and make them shift funny. The, the oil is not gonna really act as it should in one sense. The shift forks have very tight tolerances on them. If there's dirt in them, it could cause some notchy shifting issues and in general, you might as well just keep the oil clean. Clean oil also means that you're not gonna have wear and tear on the bearings. Again, there's no filters in these transmissions. So I cannot stress how important it is. So my friend Sal has got a great shop in the back of his house and we're gonna go there and we're going to get this car up on a lift and I'm gonna show you how to change the oil. And then afterwards what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the insides of one of these transmissions just to show you how complex they are and it'll make you think a little bit more about the reason that oil should be changed because any little speck of dirt, what it can do inside the transmission. So let's get to it, let's get to the shop and get stuff going. So I'm using these jack pad adapters. I like them because they have this little rough surface machine into them and you have this little rectangular section fits into the jack pad of your BMW Z4. It fits a variety of different vehicles. They're very cheap, you can get them on Amazon I'll post the link below. You can also put these on a regular floor jack if you want to jack up the car. It works great too. That's how I did my brakes on the car. I actually just did it on the ground. I didn't have a lift at the time. I'd say I got the jack pads all installed. So here you can see the way that jack pad adapter fits inside the, the jack pad of the car. The rectangular slot fits inside of this piece here and it goes against the lift arm. The lift arms just extend too far inward for this car so I just have it resting on the arm which is fine, it works okay. But that's how the jack pad actually works. It's a little adapter that fits inside the, the factory plastic pad. So you can see that's the sticker on the transmission that says MTF, which is Manual Transmission Fluid LT2. It says lifetime oil, no oil change. And obviously, we're going to have to change that oil because there's no way one of my cars is not going to have an oil change in the gearbox. There it goes. It's loose. It's loose. So what we're doing is we shock both of these because these are aluminum. 
and we want them to be loose before we even try to put an eight millimeter hex drive on these. Of course, it's gonna, these could strip really easy. So by shocking them first, you have a better shot of getting them loose. So you've got your fill plug, you got your drain plug. Eight millimeter hex, let's get to it. So I shot these before, these are aluminum plugs. I don't want to have a problem where, and what you want to do is open this up first a little bit, get some air in, in it, okay? All the hardware in these transmissions is aluminum. Don't ask me why. This is. So we're going to see first of all how dirty, if the, the soil is really dirty at all. So. I don't think it's supposed to be this black color like this. And this is why I want to change it because number one, any dirt in these transmissions can cause notchy shifting. And you say, okay, well, why does it have dirt in it? Well, it's a manual transmission. It will always have dirt in it. All right, so the, it, it's a little dark, the oil, but it's really not too bad for a little bit over 39,000 miles. And I recommend changing the oil on these transmissions regardless of what ZF says and Getrag says. This looks like a Getrag unit. It doesn't have any ZF branding on it at all. So even though they're supposed to have ZF transmissions in these cars, this looks like a Getrag unit the way it's built. It's very similar to the ones I have in the shop. So if you look at this oil, it's not really too bad. It's, it's still translucent, but it's a little bit dark in color. I don't know how that comes out from the factory if it comes out like this, that color out of the bottle. But it's important to change the oil in these gearboxes. We're gonna let it drain for a bit and really drain itself out a little bit. And I like to make sure that I'm putting the fill plug back where it went and the drain plug back where it went. Okay, so fill plug over here, drain plug over there. So we can see the oil is almost done draining from this. So we'll put the plug back in here with some thread sealant. So in filling a transmission, we're just going to fill it to the level of this hole here. We're going to fill it until it just about spills out and then cap it. Problem is, there's not enough room really to put a bottle through here. So you gotta use some sort of tube from above or if you have a pressure can, use a pressure can and fill it that way. So I'm gonna use a little Teflon tape on the fittings. And if you notice over here, it's where I, I knocked it with the punch to get it shock loose. It's okay, I didn't distort the back end of it, so it'll be fine. But unfortunately, you kind of have to always shock these because if you don't, more than likely you're going to be stripping this out. All right, so I'm using the Redline MTL fluid. It's actually what Redline recommends for BMWs. It's a GL4 high-performance lubricant. You have to make sure that you're always using a GL4-based oil and not a GL4, GL5 oil. It's very important that it's GL4 only. And the reason for that is, is because the additives in GL5 oils have too much sulfur content in them, which they say could prematurely wear out your synchronizer rings but this oil has the same viscosity that the BMW oil has. And that is the 75W80, all right? Right over there, 75W80.
So you want to fill it to the level of this fill hole, and you can see your wells running out, so it's at its proper level. So you can see I'm letting this drain out a little bit, and we want to keep the oil at the level of the fill hole. We don't want to overfill, because if you overfill a transmission, some people think it's you know cool to go put an extra half a bottle and shove it in the transmission. And then what happens is the oil levels are running at a higher level than the transmission was designed for and sometimes the seals, the oil seals, are not meant to be constantly on their lubrication levels that high and you can actually have the oil seals in the front and the back leak more because they're being overloaded with too much gear oil on the back side of the seal where maybe they're designed to be more of a wiper seal as opposed to a complete seal on their complete reservoir fluid. So it's ready to go, we're going to go pack cap this up now. Now, there's really no torque specification on the fill and drain plugs because they don't want you touching these. So I believe it's 20 foot pounds, but the problem is it's very difficult to torque 20 foot pounds on aluminum 8 millimeter hex without it stripping out. So you have to be very careful and just use your best judgment and do it to where you feel it's tight. That's all I can tell you. Uh, and use some sort of thread sealant on the, the plugs so that you don't have any leaks and it kind of keeps the plug from working itself loose, but it should be okay. So we got some of the older new, but then somehow this thing looks a little bit newer than mine. <laughs> no. Hey, thanks. There's no plastic on this car. So what you're looking at over here is the same exact transmission that's in my 2007 BMW Z4 Coupe. It's a six-speed tr ZF transmission. And the reason why I wanted to show you the insides of this transmission is so that you can see how intricate it actually is and why it's important to have clean oil. Now, here's a shift fork from the older Muncie and T10 four-speeds I built for the muscle course, for the American muscle course. It's a simple fork. It moves the synchronizer assembly and pivots over here. Compare that to this shift fork, which has cast-in detents. It runs on an interlock peg over here for these scissors. You've got a rail that drives it with another fork and the rail is supported by a couple of bushings that go into the bell housing of the case. The fork also pivots on a pin that goes into the bell housing and the pads on the shift fork actually swivel on little bearings inside here and everything moves in unison back and forth. So if you get a speck of dirt anywhere with these really tight tolerances in these transmissions, you can create the shifting from hanging up. Also, what will happen is your shifts can hang if the oil is too thick, because these rails, as they go into the case, have to be exhausted. And so, yes, the case castings do have ports inside them to exhaust oil, but if you have too thick of an oil, or the oil breaks down over a period of time, the insides of the case boards can get muddied up, and then you don't have a good the uh, motion of the fork going in and expelling the oil. And think of it as a hydraulic ram. So it's, again, very important that you have clean oil. I don't know why they always put lifetime oil and no oil change needed or anything like that, when, again, it's very important to make sure your oil levels are low. Now, another thing I want to point out, this is what I call a headset of the transmission. They're actually very beefy and big gears in these boxes. But there are no oil pumps in these gear boxes, so that if your oil runs low, you're driving forward this way, the inertia is going to pull the oil back this way, and the front end is going to starve of oil and burn up. So a lot of the issues that we see with transmissions that maybe develop a slow leak over time that's never picked up because, again, you don't have a dipstick, and there's no way of checking your oil unless you get underneath the car and remove that plug that I showed you and stick your finger inside there or something to see that your oil level is okay. So you may want to just once in a while check your oil level. 
because if you end up getting a whining or singing sound, what's happening is this section is running dry and it's starting to burn up because the remainder of the oil is going to the back of the transmission while you're, you're moving forward. So that's what the inside of the gearbox looks like and hope you like it. Quick. So thanks for watching the video. I just want to let you guys know that after about a few hours of driving the Z4, that the car does shift a lot better and a lot smoother. Most of the notchiness seems to have gone away. So the oil change definitely helped and solved that issue. I want to let you know that this is my 40th year doing manual transmissions, and I can't stress enough how important it is to change your gearbox oil. I would say 99% of the failures are oil related, or the oil level's too low or dirty. People are getting a lot of misinformation on the internet and putting the wrong oil in their, their, their transmission, like engine oil or heavier weight oils and things like that. Gearboxes are designed with a certain tolerance, a certain clearance inside of them, and it's very important that you would adhere to the manufacturer's specifications and don't really go too far away from that. Okay, so don't use engine oils in a gearbox when you should be using a gearbox oil. There's a lot of great new formulations. There's an, a video I did on some GL4 oils way back. That's on my channel, you can check it out. Speaking of my channel, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you do. And all my contact information and how you can get that oil is in the video description below. Thank you for watching. See you soon.